In this section, you will hear from several of the Hazardous Material Division's environmental health specialists. Please note that because we use several different employees and their voices differ, that the volume may need to be adjusted during this section. So please take note where your volume button is and do so when necessary. Welcome to the hazardous waste portion of the training. My name is Sandy Pence and I am an environmental health specialist with the San Diego County Department of Environmental Health Hazardous Materials Division. In this section, I will first describe hazardous waste generator status and then I'll go on to describe the three most common hazardous waste violations. These three most common hazardous waste violations were most commonly cited by inspectors during COOPA inspections of research and biotechnology businesses in San Diego County roughly over the past year. At the end of this section there will be a short knowledge assessment that you must master before you can move on to the other sections of the EPIC Plus training. With that said, let's move on. California Hazardous Waste Generator Categories Hazardous waste regulations vary by generator category. A waste generator's category is related to the amount of hazardous waste generated each month. So, before we can fully discuss hazardous waste generator violations, we have to understand the different generator categories. It is pretty simple. The more hazardous waste a business generates, the more regulated that business becomes. In California, there are large quantity generators and small quantity generators. California versus RCRA hazardous waste generator categories. In federal regulations, under the Resource Conservation Recovery Act, or RCRA, there is a category of hazardous waste generator called conditionally exempt small quantity generator. Conditionally exempt small quantity generators, or CE squeegees, are just that in the federal regulations, exempt from most generator requirements. However, in California, a CE squeegee of federally regulated wastes is regulated almost the same as a California small quantity generator. Seen as the rules for CE squeegees are more stringent in California, the more stringent rules apply to hazardous waste generators in California. What is a large quantity generator? Large quantity generators of hazardous waste generate 1,000 kilograms or more of hazardous waste during any calendar month, or they generate one kilogram of acutely hazardous waste, waste from the P listing such as sodium azide or epinephrine during any calendar month, or they generate one kilogram of extremely hazardous waste during any calendar month. Please note that extremely hazardous wastes are noted with an asterisk in Appendix X of the regulations. Examples include acrylonitrile and strychnine. What is a small quantity generator of hazardous waste? Small quantity generators of hazardous waste generate less than 1,000 kilograms of hazardous waste in a month. They never accumulate more than 6,000 kilograms total of hazardous waste on site, and a small quantity generator of hazardous waste does not hold more than one kilogram of acutely or extremely hazardous waste for more than 90 days. For a little clarity and a visual approximation of volumes, here are some helpful conversions. A thousand kilograms is about equal to 2,200 pounds, or a thousand kilograms is six and a quarter 55 gallon drums, a thousand kilograms is just about three and three quarters 55 gallon drums or 206 gallons of dichloromethane. A thousand kilograms is about 19 gallons of mercury. Six thousand kilograms is about equal to 2,007 gallons of acetonitrile or about 1,584 gallons of water. Okay, moving on. Universal waste. What hazardous waste talk in the 21st century would be complete without a discussion of universal waste generator categories? Universal waste is a type of hazardous waste. It is generated by almost everyone and it poses a lower risk to people and the environment than other hazardous waste. 
Because of this, universal waste has less stringent management standards than other hazardous waste. Different management standards means a different set of rules. There are many types of universal waste. Batteries, fluorescent bulbs, all items containing mercury, including thermometers, non-empty aerosol cans, electronic devices, and cathode ray tubes. Universal waste generator categories include conditionally exempt small quantity universal waste handlers, CESQUWG, and everyone else is universal waste handlers. For a business to qualify as a CESQUWG, it must generate less than 100 kilograms or 220 pounds of total federally regulated hazardous waste, including all universal wastes, except CRTs, in any calendar month, and generate less than 1 kilogram or 2.2 pounds of any waste identified as an acutely hazardous waste in Chapter 11. Small commercial hazardous waste generators also have to follow the recycling and hazardous waste disposal parts of the universal waste rule. However, they are not subject for rules for training, accumulation time, record keeping, or labeling. For proper management of universal waste, ensure that either the item is labeled as universal waste, the container or the area holding the universal waste is labeled with the accumulation start date. For proper storage time, do not exceed one year from accumulation start date. Also, maintain invoices and manifests on record for the last three years. The rest of this section of the EPIC Plus presentation will focus on the three most common hazardous waste violations. These violations include, number one, a container with a missing or incomplete label, number two, not having a manifest on site that was signed by the treatment storage disposal facility accepting the waste for disposal, and number three, open hazardous waste containers. Hazardous waste violation number one. A container of hazardous waste is missing a label or is not properly labeled. In this photo, the hazardous waste label has not been properly completed and would therefore be considered a violation. A generator of hazardous waste is required to conduct weekly inspections of their hazardous waste storage area to ensure that containers holding a hazardous waste are in good condition and not leaking. During these weekly inspections, the generator should, among other things, look to ensure a complete hazardous waste label is affixed to each container of hazardous waste and, most importantly, correct those that are not. This photo here is an example of a labeling violation. It is missing many, if not all, of the required elements. Container labeling requirements for hazardous waste accumulation are found in California Code of Regulations section 66262.34F. It states that hazardous waste containers must be clearly marked with the words hazardous waste, the name and address of the person or business producing the waste, the physical state, usually liquid or solid, or composition of the waste, the hazardous properties of the waste, and the date upon which each period of accumulation begins. In regards to hazardous properties, you would mark if the waste is ignitable, corrosive, reactive, toxic, or has another quality that makes the waste hazardous. For example, Used oil is a California hazardous waste, and the hazardous waste property, therefore, would be used oil. This is a typical hazardous waste label. At the top, it says hazardous waste. Along the left side of this label, you can see a red line indicating the required fields to complete for a container of hazardous waste in storage. The black line on the right side points to the fields required for completion for legal transport of a container laden with hazardous waste. Notice that the generator's name and address, as well as the waste contents or composition, physical state and hazardous properties, and the accumulation start date are all marked complete for storage. Let's take a closer look at this label. 
Contents, Composition, Physical State, and Hazardous Properties. These are all sections of the hazardous waste label that need to com be completed when that first drop of waste enters a container. Now, it isn't necessary to include an exact breakdown of all the waste constituents, but it is a good idea to include the major components. In this example, water is likely a large constituent of this waste stream, but the hazardous parts are acrylonitrile and methanol. This is a liquid waste, so in the physical state section, the box next to liquid would be checked off. Now the methanol makes the waste ignitable, so flammable is marked. The acrylonitrile makes the waste toxic, so the box next to toxic is marked. Now if something in this waste had a very low or very high pH greater than 12.5, you would want to list that constituent and also mark the corrosive box. Accurately marking the characteristics of the waste should reduce the likelihood of mixing incompatibles. Now we'll take a closer look at the accumulation start date. For the hazardous waste label to be complete, it must have an accumulation start date. This is one item that is frequently missing. Some haulers will be kind enough to prepare pre-printed labels, but they do not put the accumulation start date because that needs to be written in when the first drop of waste enters the container. Remember, it is always the generator's responsibility to completely and properly fill out the label. What about changing the accumulation start date every single day for a container that is emptied on a daily basis into a larger container? DTSC has come out with guidance that says for a container of waste, usually on a bench top or other daily use work surface, that is emptied daily, it is okay to write the words emptied daily or empty daily on the container instead of physically changing the accumulation start date every day. Again, this is only true if the container is indeed emptied every day. If empty daily is okay, what about empty weekly? Is that okay? The question was considered by the San Diego County Coupa and the Coupa has decided to accept empty weekly in the accumulation start date spot on the hazardous waste label if the container is indeed emptied every week that it accumulates and stores waste. Please be aware that there should be evidence to support the claim that the container is actually emptied out each week. Acceptable evidence includes a written procedure for weekly waste removal or employee statements to that fact. Other evidence would be considered to establish weekly removal of waste from marked containers. Weekly means every seven days, so one good idea would be to have a schedule of removing the waste from each marked container on the same day every week. Well, that brings us to the next question. If I accumulate small amounts of waste, and empty the container sometimes on Fridays and sometimes every other week or every other day. Is it okay for me to write variable for the accumulation start date? Well, the answer is no. If you cannot empty the container either daily or weekly, you must insert a date for the accumulation start date. Okay, well, that's enough about labeling. Okay, I lied. One more labeling example. This is a photo of a hazardous waste label observed during an inspection. The label appears to have had a sticky label placed on top of it, then removed. Nonetheless, there was hazardous waste observed in this container, so the label is required, and this label is missing the required information. Name, address, contents and properties, and accumulation start date. Hazardous Waste Violation Number 2. A manifest signed by the Treatment Storage Disposal Facility must be maintained for three years by the Hazardous Waste Generator. The best way to let your inspector know that the hazardous waste generated at your facility has made it to its final destination is to show the inspector the manifest signed by the TSDF for every waste shipment over the last three years. 
Record keeping. Record keeping regulations for generators are found in the California Code of Regulations, Chapter 12, Section 66262.40a. These regulations state that a hazardous waste generator must keep a copy of each manifest for three years. Initially, the generator keeps the copy left behind by the first transporter. Once the generator gets the signed manifest back from the TSDF, which should take no longer than 35 days from the shipment date, the first copy is no longer required as long as the generator then keeps the TSDF signed copy for three years. There are six copies in the Federal Hazardous Waste Manifest. All of these pages are white. The top page of the manifest is labeled at the bottom right hand corner designated facility to destination state. Now page six of the manifest is a generator's initial copy and it is up to the hazardous waste generator, the business, to make a legible copy of the manifest and send it to the state Department of Toxic Substances Control, DTSC, and getting a legible copy from the six or bottom page is difficult. Sometimes it doesn't always go through the things. It is recommended you make a copy of the top page before the transporter drives off. Manifest regulations continue in California Code of Regulations, Chapter 12, Section 66262.234. They state that within 30 days of the shipment date, the hazardous waste generator must submit a legible photocopy of the manifest to the California Department of Toxic Substances Control. Remember, the sixth page of the Uniform Hazardous Waste Manifest is the generator's copy, and frequently this copy may be illegible, so check before the hauler leaves. If it is illegible, copy the legible page before the hauler leaves and send this copy to DTSC. A business must receive a copy of the manifest signed by the TSDF. It is this copy that the business must keep for at least three years. Exception reporting is found in section 66262.42a. The business must contact the transporter and perhaps even the designated facility if the business does not receive a copy of the manifest with the handwritten signature of the designated facility within 35 days of the shipment date. If the contact does not immediately produce a manifest signed by the TSDF, the business must write an exception report outlining the steps it took to obtain proof of proper waste disposal. For large quantity generators of hazardous waste, this exception report must be submitted to DTSC within 45 days of the shipment date for missing TSDF signed copies of manifests. Generators whose waste is shipped either by water or is exported have 60 days to submit the exception report. Small quantity generators also have 60 days to submit an exception report to the DTSC. Additional information about hazardous waste manifests can be found at the DTSC website. Record Keeping Summary A generator of hazardous waste shall keep copies of biannual reports, which are required for RICRA large quantity generators and of exception reports, records of all notices, certifications, and other documents produced, including land disposal restrictions, and records of any test results or waste analysis for three years. Record retention periods are automatically extended during any unresolved enforcement action. Hazardous Waste Violation Number 3 Hazardous Waste Containers Not Kept Closed In this photo, the business chose to reuse a plastic bottle to collect silica gel waste. First off, there is no hazardous waste label, and secondly, the top is not closed. All hazardous waste containers must be kept closed except when adding or removing waste. Even if they're in a fume hood. It is important to keep all hazardous waste containers closed. Closed containers eliminates evaporation, minimizes worker exposure to chemical fumes, improves the safety area, prevents potential fire from vapors, and also is a spill prevention measure. Large quantity hazardous waste generators must comply with RICRA air emission standards for volatile organic compounds. If your business fits this category and is a research and development lab, then you may be subject to Title 22, Chapter 15, 
Article 28.5, Air Emission Standards for Tanks, Surface Impoundments, and Containers. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask your inspector. Train employees to close containers that are not being used. If you see they've missed one, close it during the inspection. It's important to be prepared to correct violations during the inspection, if possible. In review, there are three hazardous waste violations in the EPIC Plus Top 10. They are, number one, container missing label, or not properly labeled. Simply label the container completely. Number two, waste manifests are not being managed properly. Carefully complete and file the signed treatment storage disposal facility copy of hazardous waste manifests. They are evidence that you are managing your waste correctly. And number three, waste containers not being kept closed. Close the containers that are not in active use. You have just completed the hazardous waste section of the EPIC Plus online training. Next is the medical waste section. Good luck!